Today, I'm going to be talking to you about one of my favorite topics. Now, some of you are going to analyze me, label me, all kinds of stuff, and I kind of don't care. I'm a Jesus freak. You know, you know so I, I've been a dean of a university over theologians, Bible study students, uh, all the Bible theologians, professors, and all that stuff. And I would tell the professors a lot, you guys need to lighten up. I said, you got all these brains you think you have. However, you need to talk English like USA Today talk. I said, because no one is impressed by your words except for you. And you don't understand half of them. So chill out, you know. So I'm kind of one of those people that I'll never forget what happened to me when I came to Jesus. I was a non-Christian, of course, never heard the name of Jesus in my life until I was 21. I was a drunken sailor, a fighter, boxed for the Navy base team, did all kinds, because I was so angry at people, I just had to be able to hit people and not go to the brig. <laughs> and so my life was so different. I grew up in kind of a rage family. My father was a rage guy, he's very angry. I was afraid of him. So as soon as I got out of high school, I enlisted. And then after all my training that they gave me to do what I did, you know, um, I, I was, this missionary found me, I actually found him, and he told me about Jesus Christ. And he said, you know, son, you've tried everything else in your life. You really need to try Jesus. He's addictive, yes. and he will change your life. Yes. And I didn't know why I did it. I just felt like, I said, okay, what's the deal? Tell me what to do. And he led me down a Bible pass, group of passages called the Romans Road. And so I got to the end, Romans 10, 9, and 10. Confess your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. That's it. So confessing and believing in your heart, that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, when I became a Christian, my friends didn't know what happened to me. They, they thought, does he have a girlfriend at church? Because he's always there. You know, and by the way, his vocabulary, he, he hardly talks. He's very quiet now before. And I said, I didn't have very many rooms. vocabulary left. I had to rethink how to talk. You, you know, some of you know what I'm talking about. You've been there, done that. And so my, I became quiet, but I had, was full of faith. Now, the missionary that led me to Christ, these are some of the first passages that I'm going to talk to you about today that he gave me on how to respond to Jesus' instruction. This is what I want you to do, Wade. I took it personally. And so go into all the world, preach the gospel, everyone. I led my father to the Lord, led my mother to the Lord. This rage guy, later on, and he became a deacon in a church. It's like radical change. And so I took this so literally, and I still do, I understand these languages, you know, the originals and all that, but I'm telling you what, this is real what I'm telling you today. And so I was, I was saved, but didn't have a lot of wisdom. Ever been there? So one guy was arguing with me. I was trying to lead him to the Lord. I was in the cafeteria on the Navy base, and, and, I, and, he's, and he's arguing with me. He's like in my face, so out of control Wade, I grabbed him by the shirt and threw him up against the wall. He said, okay, man, okay, man. <laughs> what do you want me to believe? And so I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I was so anxious and you know, didn't know how to balance it all out with what happened to me because Jesus changed my life yeah. completely. I had hope, I had peace, contentment that I'd never experienced before. One day, I used to walk and pray the golf course on the bay, on the base on Guam, and I was walking and praying, and I was so anxious to lead someone to Jesus, to tell someone about Jesus. I was praying, and I, I said, Lord, help me lead someone to Jesus today. Yeah. And so I saw this God, guy over on the green, probably about 100 yards from where I was. He was all alone. I literally ran after him, and he was on the green getting ready to putt, and I said, sir, I have to tell you something. He said, who are you? You know, this is an officer's base. I was an enlisted man, but I walk on and pray. So he, I said, you have to know Jesus Christ. 
He'll change your life. I don't know what's going on in your life right now, but you have to know Jesus Christ. That man was on his knees in 60 seconds accepting Jesus in his heart. Come on. <laughs> you got to go for it. You know, now, now I'm quieter, you know, a little bit, a lot wiser, I hope. And I base the, place these things and, you know, I, I'm, I'm temper, my temperament's cool and it's all of that, but my passion has always been Jesus. How about you? So I want you to stand with me one more time. We're going to read the word. And so is this scripture on the screen from Mark chapter 16? Put that up there with it. So I want you to read it with me. Unless it's not there. I'll read it. There it is. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. Read these with me. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. Say amen. Come on, have a seat. So I have to tell you, you know, God does these things. Another portion of the scripture, this is in Matthew, same request from Jesus. Now, this is his last request to his disciples. I want you to do this. And so I've heard a lot of requests from people before they died, and I try to meet them, but I've led a lot of people to Christ too on their deathbed. I've never had a person in the hospital getting ready to die that said, no, I won't accept Jesus. All right. It's just, they're in a coma, I lead them to the Lord anyway. And so all of that, so this commandment it's not a commandment, it's a request. I don't like the word commandment, go. I like, the, he requests with all eagerness, all energy, please tell people about me. Please go to every person because they're so important. You know how God looks at you? He sees you as a wonderful, talented, beautiful, is that okay, person with all kinds of abilities, and he deeply loves you more than you could ever understand. That's what Jesus feels about you. And he sees your potential. I had no idea when I gave my life to Christ that I'd ever do anything that I'm doing now or in my past. Every step of the way has been a step of faith. I've always said, Roz, my wife tells me not to do this, but whenever I'm asked to do something, she, you know, I say, you know, isn't there someone better that can do this? You know, I'll train them, but you don't want me doing this. Someone's got to be better. So I'm probably the person like fifth down the line. Everybody said no before me. You get the weight, he's going to say yes. God helps you when you step out and you do what I'm asking you to do today and what Jesus asked us to do. The Bible says in Matthew, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and I am with you all the time. All the time. Always is a really big word. Like no beginning, no end. Always. He's always with you. And so, and so then another verse from Luke he said to them, repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And then he repeats this. Jesus gives this command with power in your life. All this is after his resurrection. He's speaking to his disciples. He said, you will receive power. You've probably heard this before. The Greek word for power is dunamis. It's where we get our word dynamite. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses, shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and Samaria to the ends of the earth. So this is the story that we have to tell why we're asked by Jesus to tell everyone. Now, I have a lot of fun. I, I, kind of, I got into this mindset probably decades ago 
where everything, everybody I sit next to, like on an airplane when I want to take a nap, I feel this urge periodically, and I have a divine mandate for them. So when I sense that, I go after them. Now, I really like working with Muslims because they're, all, they're Uber drivers, and I become their friend with a relationship. We start talking. It's really p- calm and peaceful. And, it, and then they, they say, well, what do you believe? I said, you know, I said, tell me about your Muslim faith. I, I'm really interested in that. And they said, well, this is what we believe and all that. I said, that is so interesting to me. Thank you for telling me that. I said, by the way, in the Quran, which I've read, Jesus is mentioned 25 times. Moses is mentioned 360, 336 times. And I said, isn't it interesting that Muhammad really respected Jesus? Respected Jesus. And I said, how do you put that together in 560 years after Jesus died? He said, you know what? You got a point there. Muhammad really respected Jesus. And he said, what do you believe? I said, I want to be just like Jesus. And then you get out of the car <laughs> and let the Holy Spirit zap him. It's timing. You got to get timing. It's timing here. <laughs> so these last words, these last requests, three things. We've got a task. T-A-S-K. We have something to do when we're following Jesus. When we come to the Lord, we have, he's asking all of us, this is the task. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. And so when this started, there was only a few men that was commissioned to do this or asked to do this, and he expected them to do what he asked them to do, and he expects them all to see results, but you got to go for it. All of us are shy. I mean, when God called me to the ministry... Uh, you know, I was still in, the, in, in Guam where I was, found Christ. When God called me to, I knew it was a calling. I, all I wanted to do in life was tell people about Jesus. I said, this is incredible. People need to get this. I mean, no more. I mean, he clears up everything. And so that's all I wanted to do. And so I, I have, have been, I've gone for it everywhere I go, and I hear all these incredible stories. So we were to respond to what Jesus asked to do, and this is what the disciples did. Now, some of us might, might the word creature, we, we kind of don't know what that means. So different, different gospels say this. Matthew said all nations. I mean, is that pretty clear? I mean, to me, I get it, every one of these nations. And Mark said every creature, that's people, and access to the uttermost parts of the earth, that's everywhere. I've been in some very interesting parts of the world where I'm kind of like the first guy there talking to them about the Lord, and a lot of other people do that. And so that's very, you've got to be careful, but it's amazing how people respond to the light, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. The early church called him followers of the way, followers of the word, First Christians were called that name in Antioch when they started being called Christ. That means little Christ. They remind us of Jesus. That's what we remind people of. All these different terms. And then the fish symbol was part because of persecution. They identify each other, just kind of do it on the sand. And so all these terms, what people have wanted to and were asked to get to every nation. So the task, we know what to do, right? Is that as clear as mud? We know what to do. That's a task. And so then the terms. This is an interesting point in the society that we live today, in which we live today. So the terms are this. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. You know, there's two different kinds of worlds that are in existence. The kingdom of God is all over the earth. There's 2.56 billion people on earth that call themselves Christians. I don't know if they all are, but that's what they call themselves. But there are people coming to the Lord all the time, and the terms are they have to believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And so then the Bible says there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So Jesus is the only way. He's the truth. 
Now, we live in this world where we believe in like monotheism. We believe in all these things that always lead to heaven. That's very popular today and it was very popular at the early church, been very popular throughout the ages. But there, we say, well, if you, if you love people, if God loves people, he'd just get everybody into heaven. No, there's one condition. How many, time, how many conditions? <laughs> Give our life to Jesus Christ. God is a giving God. This series is about giving. God is a giving God. That's his nature. He gave everything for you and for me. And when the lights came on in my head about that, I said, you, no one can love me like that because I didn't grow up in a loving environment, a loving home. I didn't feel. But this love that God has for us it's amazing. I fasted and praised one day, one year. I prayed for 21 days. Help me understand your love for me. I just want to get it more, understand it more. And God came through. When the lights came on, it was amazing. After my 21, the last day of my 21 days, God showed me a sign and a wonder that I'll never forget. I'll tell you about it sometime. The love of God. God is a giving God. Say this, God is a giving God. God, is a giving God. And, we are his and we are his children. And we are giving people. We, giving people. we, give. we give. Because we've received. And so we tell people, we, we, we do nice things, we do good things. When we, you know, when we see a person that's lonely, heartbroken, bro broken, I tell you, we're there to help them. I heard this statistic because I'm a little bit involved in Convoy of Hope with working with the leader of that. And the, and the number is this, if the church were removed from this earth, about 70% of all the good deeds that are done on this earth would be removed. We are the majority that reach people that haven't been reached to help people, help the poor, feed the hungry. We do those things. Because God is a giving God and he wants us to be giving people. Romans 10, 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Philippians 2, 9 through 11 says, the name, say the name, name. which is above every name, that, that name Jesus, every knee will bow of those in heaven, on earth, those under the earth, Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So what is our confession? Everyone who believes in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus? Yeah. So I want to make a little deal with you. What do you repeat these words after me? All of you, those viewing on television or whatever you're doing, got to do this. Put down your coffee. Think, focus, follow these words. Now, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10, 10, and chapter 10, 9, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, say with me, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. A little louder. Jesus is Lord. And believe, in your heart and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, from the dead. You, will you will be saved. Isn't that a good deal? Yeah. Now think of all the yucky puka stuff you've done in your life. But everything you've done, I still go back to some of the crazy things I did before as a Christian, and I'm embarrassed. God doesn't remember. All your sins God cast in a sea as far as the east is from the west, the north is from the south, a sea of forgetfulness. You can remind God all you want, but he doesn't remember it, but the devil does. And he will accuse you. Remember when he used to do this? Remember when he did that? I tell you what, and we, some, you know, we, some, we, we, we occasionally fail in life, but the Bible tells us in Psalms, so the righteous fall seven times, God will lift them up. Right. Don't you give up on God because he's not giving up on you. Amen. And so there's no gray area of salvation. We're either in God's kingdom or we're living in the power of darkness. Wow. And I could do a whole series on that topic. It's scary. We don't want to be there. The devil's smart. He can trick you. He can, he can set a snare for you, a trap. It happens all the time. But with you, Jesus, walking with Jesus, the Holy Spirit will guide you, and you don't have to worry about that. 
So the commission requests that we do the terms and we do what Jesus requests. And then the last point today, you with me today? I'm so happy, you know, because um, I'm just happy about that. There's the test. Say the test. So what's the test? It's kind of what I've been talking about today. You know, you just kind of think you got people you work with, your boss, your employees. You know, timing is everything. So you got to kind of wait until they're ready to talk or want to talk. By the way, people, when they're broken or hurt or wounded or rejected, many of them are open right then. So you talk to them, you listen, kind of counsel them, and you get to this as a follower of Jesus. And these are things that we can expect as Christians. Now, the test is, these early disciples, they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word through accompanying signs. So what happens when you're a Christian, if you expect God to work in your life with people, there'll be signs that follow you. Now, you might not know, I I was frightened to death when God called me to the ministry because I wanted to speak to people one-on-one. I didn't like speaking to crowds. You know, they scared me, and sometimes you scare me. <laughs> and so I, I remember the, the first, one of the first times that we were in San Diego. My ship was in port. I got involved with Teen Challenge, working with drug people on the beaches and all over the place. And it was great. And I was doing that when I was off duty. Then my testimony kind of got out there with a bunch of people in San Diego churches and stuff like that. So I was asked to speak at this church in Southern California, Cardiff by the Sea. Ever been there? Really pretty area. And so I was, down, I was asked to speak there. And so I then, my Rosalind was my fiance, and I said, they want me to speak there. I'm going to go, but I need you to go with me. So that was our date. And so we, we, you know, we used to date by going to Bible studies. How about you? What do you do when you date? <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, you know, ladies, let me tell you something. When you go on a date with, with a person, you know, um, they try to kind of, you know, do their thing. Don't let them do that. They're jerks. They're just jerks. Sorry, guys. You, got, you, you know this. And so what you do, ladies, when you're in the car, you carry this big Bible. You hold this on your lap. If it's in your apartment at a movie, carry this big Bible. There's no doubt. And if they try to kind of hug you, kiss you kind of stuff, just put that Bible between you and that dude and say, you got to cross Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John to get to me. So there's these tests. So I was asked to speak at this church called Cardiff by the Sea Church and uh, got there. I was scared to death. I was nervous. I was sick to my stomach for three days before we got there. And, uh, and, and what happened, the, the worship was going on. It was great. This is during the Jesus movement. So you know the kind of music that's going on. I didn't expect anybody to be there. Church said about 250 people. It was packed. I said, oh my word. They're here to hear me? This is crazy. Why would they want to hear me? And so that was the normal attendance, by the way. <laughs> Not here to hear. And so anyway, uh, the, pa- the worship was ending. I was about ready to be introduced by the pastor. I stood up and ran out of the building. I had an anxiety attack. I ran out of that building. I ran across the parking lot into a field. And I, I said, Lord, this is killing me. You either have to change my calling or heal me right now. And so I stood there, and, and the pastor said, where'd that guy go? You know? <laughs> so I got back in there, and I walked up, and I gave my testimony. But this hasn't always been easy for me. Yeah. Believe it or not, I'm a social introvert. But I'm an extrovert for Jesus. I believe this stuff. I've experienced it. I've seen it happen to multitudes of people. It's amazing what happens to our life. So the test is they preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word through signs and wonders, through accompanying signs. You know what the word preach the word means? It's to proclaim, to declare. The word kurox means a spokesman for the king. We're speaking for the king whenever we talk to people. So it's viewed to be the highest, most noble, privileged position in the kingdom to speak for the king. So the Bible tells us this, Paul tells Timothy. Tim, don't get anxious about all this stuff, but remember this, whenever you preach or tell people about Jesus, you're communicating the very oracles of God. Say oracles. Oracles. 
Isn't that an amazing word? That's what happens to you when you start talking to people about Jesus. Then signs will follow you. That's evidence of divine power. I expect a miracle every day. I I expect a surprise every day from God. I anticipate it. I wake up and say, okay, what are you going to do today? You know, I might not say it, but I'm thinking it. I'm there because you never know what God will do in your life when you're interested in a person's soul. And then signs are evidence of God's power. And they'll follow you. This means when we're a disciple of Jesus, if you just believe these signs will follow you, they will follow you. I went through years as a pastor. And I was very hesitant to pray for people for healing. You know why most pastors, a lot of pastors, not most, a lot of pastors are that way? They're afraid it might not work. And that's what we're afraid of. We see people that are ill or sick or whatever. We're afraid it might not work, so it's going to be embarrassing. You know what? I changed my mind. I felt the Lord speak to my spirit saying, Wade, you do the prayer, I'll do the healing. And he said, if I don't, I've got my reasons. Trust me. Same with all of our lives. God might have a very good reason why people are in a particular dilemma. I've seen a lot of people come to Christ when they've been ill or different things. There's, there's a lot of reasons why, but don't question God. He's the healer, not you. You just do what he tells you to do. And so I just pray for people. I believe we're going to be, and let me tell you what, a lot more people are healed since I'm praying for them than they were when I wasn't. You got to go for it. Might be your mother, your father, your cousin, your niece, your children, your husband, people you work with. Just say, can I have a word of prayer with you? I want to pray with you about this. This concerns me. And you do it, and like they're amazed, and many times they come back and say, what did you do? I'm doing great. That kind of stuff. So these signs will follow you. And then God's divine power is available. When we do this, what God commands. So the release of divine power comes out in our life when we began believing in Jesus and just assuming that signs and wonders go with you wherever you go. You know, I've been um, working with theologians. I was a dean of a Christian university. And I tell you what, I hear theologians sometimes say they don't believe that that signs and wonders exist today. And so I've heard a lot of pastors, different denominations might believe it. I say, well, what are you going to do with church history? How are you going to do that? What do you mean they ended at the early church? You go through church, you, you need to be a student of church history because there are multitudes, multitudes of signs and wonders, healings, incredible things that have, that have happened since the early church. We had a friend that was in Saipan, and, and he was a missionary there, and he believed in this, and people were being healed all over Saipan and all over the, that part of different islands around that area. And so what happened, they started bowing down and worshiping him because some people raised from the dead. And so this man, Sam Sasser, had to leave The island say, you can't worship me. You worship Jesus. He's the one that's doing all this. And he left because he didn't want them to be misunderstood what he's doing. Isn't that amazing? So signs and wonders, these do happen today. And anybody that tells you they don't, they do. There's all kinds of history. There's Bible throughout Old and New Testament. God is a giving God. God is a healing God. Say that. God is a healing God. Signs and wonders will follow you. Try it for a day. See, Lord, I'm anticipating you're going to bring people in my life today that I'm going to be able to make their day. I'm going to pray for them. They're going to sense something about me that they're going to be drawn to. That's Jesus. He goes wherever you go. And he backs you up whenever you pray. Isn't that kind of cool? Then he says, oh, cast out demons. I've had that experience many times. By the way, in America... You know, really in the Western world, demonism is really sophisticated demonism. You know, people look at the Bible and all that, the demon possession. The the demons are sophisticated. So they'll attack us, try to get in our life in all kinds of ways. Television, movies, you know, social networking. There's a lot of ways they try to get. So we'll cast out demons, speak in different languages, speak in tongues. That means it's glossolalia. All on the day of Pentecost, everybody's speaking in another language. 
and no means you'll, you'll be harmed. When you're going out, he even says that snakes can, animals can attack you, but you'll be healed. It, it, poison, all that stuff. So sometimes maybe someone tries to act, they try to make you sick. And so trust God. Somebody's doing that, he's going to protect you. Even the Apostle Paul in Acts 28, 30 through 3 through 6 says, when Paul was bitten by a deadly viper, he simply shook it into the fire. Like, what's the big deal? That's a rattlesnake. Oh, that's nice. And so God goes with you. He helped you. I've seen this happen so many times in many of your lives and in my life. So we'll lay hands on people and they'll recover. And there's different words for healing in the Bible. Some are immediate, different Greek word there. Just like immediate, you're healed of whatever illness. Some are healed totally, physically and spiritually. Demons are cast out, but the body's healed too. The mind's healed. Do you believe that God can heal mental illness? I believe it. It's no big deal. God will heal people. You pray for people. Even in your own life. Ask someone to pray for you. Pray for yourself. So when you preach and you tell people about this gospel, you see, the gospel is God's gift. It's Jesus. And we need to go wherever we go telling people, looking for a divine opportunity in their life. The sick will be healed. Demon possessed will be delivered. The miraculous will happen when necessary. The protection of God will be with you wherever you go. So we've got the task. Amen. We've got the terms. You know what they are. We've got the test. So I want us all to stand today. Would you do that with me? Thank you for listening to me today. You are very nice. You know, I sometimes see people fall asleep when I preach. And so I tell people, don't worry about it. Church is a very good place to take a nap. God will wake you up when you need to hear something. Just take your nap. Don't worry about it. Chill out, relax. This is a peaceful place. So how many of you today, big question, want, when you believe in Jesus, you're walking with Jesus, how many of you are going to anticipate God moving in your life, in your family, in your workplace, your neighborhood, your community? Just anticipate it. How many will do that? Now, I want to pray with you, but I want you to do something. It's happened to me many, many times. There's something about taking a step and coming up here and just saying, Lord, I'm committed, and I will follow your requests. Would you step out wherever you are and just come around here? I'm committed, and I am going to follow your requests. And if you don't yet know Jesus, you're missing a great bargain. It's the greatest gift you could ever receive. You might not have a lot of stuff on earth, but let me tell you what, you're saving up in heaven. There's so much glory and honor and God's goodness to you in heaven for eternity. You're going to be doing stuff. I believe that animals will be in heaven. That favorite dog, going to be there. You know, I, I believe there'll be trees and forests and walking trails in a beautiful place. And God knows the desire of your heart. You're going to see the desire of your heart and spend as much time there as you want to. I have this log home and a great trout stream. God is going to do that, and you're going to see the glory of God. His presence will light heaven. There'll be a light. There'll be no evil. There'll be no sick. There'll be no sorrow, no pain. Your rejection, you'll feel no rejection because God totally accepted you and you are, you're going to enjoy that so much. Your mind will be so open to the goodness and the generosity to God. Isn't that amazing? So much. Pray this prayer after me. Father, you know everything I think. You know everything I do. And I thank you for being part of my life. I have given my life to Jesus Christ. And I am determined I'm going to do whatever he asks me to do. 
There's an anointing on my life. There's power in my life through the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus' name, I can do all things through Christ. Healing will follow me. Peace will follow me. Contentment will follow me. People will calm down when they're around me. And I trust you with every decision I make because I have determined I'm going to obey you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God a clap offering. Come on, we can do this. We can do this. God is a giving God. You are giving people.